Thank you for watching today. This is Kinnear. Welcome back to another Starfield New Game Plus video. If you're following the series, in the last video, we built a small outpost in the Olympus system to stash our contraband and pay off bounties when we needed to. In this video, I'm going to return to ship hunting, primarily because Bethesda broke the last method. The good news is I've found a method that reproduces the same results I was getting before. In my final test, I grabbed an Ecliptic Claymore 3 in only three attempts. As I was testing the method earlier, I found a Spacer Hyena 3, a Vista 3, and a Crimson Fleet White 3. All of those are top tier ships. All of this can be done in New Game Plus by a Starborn flying the Guardian and it doesn't require space combat. So let's get started. So briefly, there are four ways to get ships in this game. One is through the primary quests or through some POI locations. An example is the Frontier, which you get for free, the Dagger, which you pick up at the Vulture's Roost, the Kepler that you can get through a quest with Walter, and in a much longer series of quests, through the Freestar Collective Faction, you can get the Star Eagle. But what if those ships aren't really good enough for our needs? We're a Starborn in New Game Plus, and we start off with a Starborn Guardian. So we're left with three other options. One is to buy ships. If you want to accumulate the money to do so, you can. Just stop in at a ship services vendor and you can buy ships. The other is to board ships in space. This is a combat approach. And if you have put at least one point in target control systems and maybe some points in other ship skills, and you're talented enough at combat in space, you might be able to take any ship and fight your way up to the best ships in the game. However, the Starborn Guardian has a reputation for not being the best ship for space combat, especially if you're going to fight multiple enemies, so there's a higher level of skill on the part of the player that's necessary. I'm not sure I bring that to every combat situation myself, so I'm looking for a third option. My goal is to find ships that are already on the ground or that will land sometime after I arrive on a planet that I can board on foot, take out the crew, and take over the ship. That approach worked pretty well up until the March 19th, 2024 patch. You could land on a remote moon, step out of your ship, hear a sonic boom, and then look up and a ship would be coming down. If the ship that landed was something you wanted, you could go ahead and board it, take it over, fight whoever's on board, and take that ship for your own. If the ship wasn't something you wanted, you could restore back and try again. That function doesn't work anymore. And when you step foot outside your ship, you don't hear the sonic boom, and you don't get a ship landing nearby. The process that I'm currently using is similar to the process I used before. I'm still going out to the higher level systems all the way to the right of the map. Places like Bohr and Archimedes and Hawking, etc. However, I'm looking for moons that are largely craters and have helium-3 on them. Now, Correlation, as a statistical idea, does not guarantee causation. So I can't say to you that moons with crater biomes with helium on them are the only way to find ships like this. There might be a lot of other types of moons where you can do this exact same technique. I don't know. What I do know is that in my repeated tests, this seems to work for me. So that's all I'm saying. So you can try it the way I did it. If it works for you, that's fantastic. If you find a different way to make this work, Drop it in the comments and share with other people. One of the things I noticed right off the bat as I'm landing on these moons is that there are a couple different types of environments when I land. Sometimes I land on a moon and there's nothing around me or, or things are very, very distant. There, there are points of interest, but they're very far away. There's nothing close to me. And those moons don't seem to work out for me. In some cases, and this is after the patch, I land and there's a point of interest, usually a sizable one that might be worth exploring, right next to my ship. It's very close. Those actually are very interesting moons to me. So I will get out of the ship on those moons and I'll start to look around in a 360 degree circle. And what I'm looking for with my scanner open is not the points of interest. I'm actually looking for a direction where there aren't points of interest where there's nothing really on the scanner in front of me. So like an empty direction I could run. Because I believe that there is a higher chance of a ship landing site existing in that direction. So if I land, and it is a densely populated area, there are points of interest, but I notice in one particular direction, 
there's nothing visible to me. That is interesting to me, and I generally wander off in that direction and start looking for a ship landing site. In several cases, I've walked upon I've walked up to them, looked one direction, seen nothing, pan to the left and right, come back and there was a ship right in front of me. For whatever reason at this point in time, and maybe it's been this way before, you cannot see the ships, even when they're on the ground, until you get within 250 meters of the ship landing site. And in many cases, the ship landing site isn't even visible on your scanner. So you have to get out of your ship and you have to go walking around. Now, you can look for visual cues. And in many cases, you can notice a plateau. The ground is leveled and you'll look at it and say, well, that looks, that looks like a landing spot. And you can see that from a distance, but you won't be able to tell if there is a ship there or not. It'll look like it's empty. But you could run up to it, and as soon as you get within 250 meters, or some, sometimes a little closer, a ship will just magically appear on the landing area. So, the key is, get out of your ship, walk around, and look for them. The second part is, when you find a ship landing area, make note of it. If you need to take a screenshot, if you can't take a screenshot, make a note that just says it's on this planet or this moon, and if you have landed, like I have, in two or three different spots, just make sure you know which one has the ship landing area. So the reason I started testing this method was I was finding these ship landing areas that didn't look like there was anything there until I arrived. And when I arrived, there were ships. My first ship was the Spacer Hyena 3, a very good ship. I went on board, took out the crew, and took the ship and parked it in the garage. I came back and I started searching again for another ship landing site, and I found it. I found some smaller ships, the Ecliptic Falcata 3. I found two of those, and I grabbed them just to have them, but I kept looking. The second part of the strategy, once you've identified one or more ship landing sites, is finding out how to trigger them so that ships show up. And this is the technique that I've recently tested. Many of you who have farmed legendaries in some of the space stations and special locations across the game are familiar with sleeping on the planet Venus. Venus has a particular timing element that makes the days considerably longer, or the hours considerably longer. So if you go to Venus, and you sleep for 24 hours on Venus, it will be the equivalent of 2400 hours in universal time, or UT time. So what I've discovered is if you go to Venus, sleep for 24 hours, and then return to the ship landing sites, you will be able to get ships to spawn indefinitely. So one of the first places I went was back to the Archimedes system. I like Bohr, I like Hawking, I like Huygen, and I like Archimedes for ship hunting in general. And this is where I've gone in the past for ship hunting, so I've kept going back here at this point in time. I'm looking for small moons without, without much in the way of, uh, certainly no flora fauna. And when I land on them, I'm looking for exactly this, which is some kind of point of interest that's very close. This particular moon is Archimedes 1A. And right in front of us when we land is some kind of military structure. And my approach at this point in time is to actually turn and go the opposite direction. So what I'm looking for is some direction on the surface of the moon where I don't see any structures ahead of me. Because I am assuming, because I landed close to a structure, there's going to be multiple points of interest around, some of which I'll be able to see on my scanner right away. So I'm looking for a gap in that on the horizon, and I head that direction. Now I've already done this before on another planet and found a ship. <laughs> and it happened again here too, 200 meters away. I, I looked this direction, there was nothing here. I turned back, but just because I had closed the distance to 200 meters, Suddenly there's a ship, and this is a big ship too. This looks like uh, one of the big spacer ships given the color scheme too. So we're gonna just go ahead and close in on this thing. We will 
not engage any ground personnel. I don't know what it's been like for you, but in general for me, if I start fighting these guys, the ship will leave. I don't want that, so I'm just going to see if I can find my way in. I can't go under the ship. i got to sneak around. And those are spacers. So yeah, this is a spacer. A Hyena 3. That is a, a top-level combat ship, Tier 3. So good components. And it's taking off. That happened on a smaller ship that I found, too. So we found a ship landing site that we couldn't see at a distance. Even though normally in this game you've got tremendous line of sight and you can see all sorts of structures out there, the ships are not being shown to you. I don't know if that's deliberate. I'm not saying that. I'm going to go ahead and clear this place out. This ship is a bit of a maze. Oh, they're right above me. Guy. Oh crud, they opened the door. <laughs> They're sneaking in at me. Thanks. Take that. Okay. Particle fuse. Oh, more of these guys. Let's deal with all this. Except Betty throwing grenades. Yeah, I, I gave her a, a negotiator and she has grenades. I just expect to see lots of that. I don't think she's damaging me, though. I just... Okay, so we've got everybody off here. Let's grab the pilot seat. Twenty-four light year jump range, forty reactor. We'll just take it back to the smuggler's chalet and park it. There it is. We, sh we found a ship landing site. And it had a nice top of the line tier 3 combat ship. So we didn't have to do any space combat. Keep in mind, this is one of the original tactics that's that's been in the game for quite a while. Which is if you could find a ship landing site and you got a ship there, you can capture that ship. And for some unknown reason, there's a security person on this ship. <laughs> they weren't there when we took it over, and they're there now, so. Anything to say? Howdy. Hello. Excuse me. She's not any particular kind of security. So here's the technique. Once you've found a ship landing site on a planet that's sufficiently high level, come back to Venus and sleep for 24 hours. Since this is New Game Plus, this is probably a technique that's familiar to many people. If you haven't seen it before, Venus has one of the most advantageous rotational times when it comes to comparison to UT time. So if you sleep 24 hours here, it's the equivalent of 2400 hours across the entire galaxy. And that usually resets almost everything in the game itself. So you have to make a decision as to whether this is an appropriate way to solve the problem for your particular game. After you slept, go back out to the planet that you found the ship landing site on. In my case, I'm gonna go back out to Archimedes 4A. There's something unusual going on here with my jump distance. I can't jump straight to the system. 
However, I can land on a nearby planet. And I don't want to land on 4A right away because I'm going to save in space nearby. So I'm going to land on Moon 1A, which I've been on, and actually this planet also has a ship landing site, but I'm not going to use that one for this demonstration. I'm just going to use Moon 1A as a stop off on the way to 4A. Gonna head into space. Spacers, I don't really want to mess with them. Let's get out of here. They will start off non-hostile, so I'm just going to come over here. I would like to just enter orbit around 4A, but I don't think I can do that. I think because I've already been there, it's going to want me to land. So I'm going to go to the nearby planet. That'll work just as well. I'm going to travel to the, to the planet that that moon orbits because I've not landed there and I can just travel to orbit. I'm going to do a quick save right here, and this is the key quick save that I'm going to continue to use. Now I'm going to go back over to moon 4A and this middle landing area is the one that I've already identified as near a ship landing site. There's our starboard guardian, there's the ship landing site 500 meters away. We're just going to run over and see what comes down. Now keep in mind the only thing we've done at this point in time that's different than visiting this in the first place is we've gone to Venus and we've slept for 24 hours. That event alone appears to reset the ship landing sites across the galaxy. And in my other tests, it doesn't matter which one I go to, I'll start to get ships. Just as important, I'll hear the sonic boom and the ship will land. So this looks like a small ship, we don't want it anyway. But it's perfect for our test. So I'm just going to restore back to orbit around the nearby planet and come right back to this moon and land at this site again. This place is more boring than my last boyfriend. Thanks, Betty. And there was the sonic boom again. A lot of sniper rifle. I recognize that shape. I don't remember the name of the ship, but it's another small ship and I don't want it. So let's restore again. back in orbit. Bet there's a valuable We're going to come straight back over to Moon 4A. Betty gets to make a witty remark. We're 500 meters away. We'll head back over. And 
I think it's around 270 meters. Right around there, we hear the sonic boom, and there's a ship coming in. What do we have? I think that's an ecliptic Claymore 3. That's the shape. Bingo. Three tries. So in three tries, I've got the ship that I want. As a strategy for New Game Plus for a Starborn that arrives with just the Starborn Guardian ship, as long as I've gone through the process that I've covered in my earlier videos, I'm well armed, I have weapons, med packs, and I can storm the ship and take it over, this strategy works just like it did before. We'll sneak past the guys on the ground, go inside, and clear it out. And the ship is ours, Captain. Grab a seat. Check the stats. Wonderful jump range. Good reactor, good crew. Shield's decent. Pretty good, but, but not the top. I'll fly it back to the smuggler's chalet and park it in the garage. So there's the new technique, really a small variation on the previous approach. First, we have to find ship landing sites. I'm doing that by going to desolate moons with crater biomes and helium-3, just because that seems to work. Most importantly, we've got to get out of the ship and walk around in areas where there are not other points of interest. Just head out to the horizon where it doesn't look like there's anything else to be seen. When we find ship landing sites, make a note. Head to Venus, sleep for 24 hours. Because we're in a Starborn Guardian and we can't put a bed in it, we might have to find a civilian outpost on Venus. After the sleep, go back into orbit near the location of the ship landing site, make a quick save, land there, run over, and see what lands. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Remember, the greatest mistake you can make in life is to be continually afraid you'll make a mistake. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and get notifications. This is Kinnear, and I'm out of here.